Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. Boy, we have, I'll tell you what, since the Fred Dodson reality creation event in Orlando, the first weekend in March, we have been having some incredibly high energy things emanate from our Facebook page, our healing convergence that we have on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's from the Facebook page. How do you find it? Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast listeners and Fun Astrology Podcast listeners page on Facebook. And I'm coming to you from Asheville, North Carolina, where I'm house sitting for some podcast listeners who are on vacation and very grateful to have been asked and accept the opportunity to take care of these two cute little cats and also to stay in this incredibly beautiful setting in the hills around Asheville, North Carolina. I've also been doing some TikTok videos and from one of those is why we are here today. I mentioned in one of them just very casually and almost in passing, setting an intention. And somebody asked a question, what does it mean to set an intention? What is it about intentions? So I referred them to the Wayne Dyer audiobook that is actually in an abridged form on YouTube for free, The Power of Intention. And I thought, you know, it's been a while since I've listened to that, so I put it on myself, and wow, just was drawn in instantly. And <laughs> Dr. Dyer starts talking about levels of energy. Well, hello, Fred Dodson's audiobook, right? And he approached it from a little bit different perspective, but was talking about when we set intentions, basically what we're trying to do is connect to the highest form of energy, which is God, source, the universe itself. So typically, you know, if we think about intention, let's think about an intention. I have an intention to pick up this mug that is on my desk and have a sip of tea. Now, before I do that, I will have a moment, even if it's just an unconscious moment, of intention to do that. So I simply reach over, pick it up, have a sip. Pretty easy to fulfill, right? If I think about bringing a million dollars into my life, I have an intention of making a million dollars this year. Does that result in the commensurate actions that I need to implement in order to do that? Or does it just become a wish or a hope or a, gee, it would be nice kind of thing? If it doesn't include the actions to go with it, commensurate to the wish or to the intention, then it is just a wish. But a key part of intention is certainly determination. And this is what we talked about a couple of podcasts back, which Fred identified as his number one manifesting tool, simply because I said so. In other words, the person who says, I will make a million dollars this year with that kind of determination basically bends the force of nature in order to do what needs to be done in order to make as best of an effort as possible to do that. Picking up the coffee mug is a second effort. It's There's no real effort needed. You just do it, unless you're like me and you go, where did I leave my cup? <laughs> but I think we could say safely that where determination meets action equals the results of our intention. But like I said, in the power of intention, Dr. Dyer takes it a step further because he connects intention as being the very flow itself of source energy, connecting with source energy and allowing that energy to be a co-creator with you. It's the same thing, same concept as Greg Braden's Pray Rain when he talked about thanking, not thanking for the answer, thanking source for the privilege of co-creating. Then this got really brought home when I thought about a story or an example that a friend of mine talked about back before he met his wife. This goes back 15, 20 years ago, that he had come off of a relationship that didn't work, and he was regrouping and refiguring out, well, when I do this again, how am I going to find the right person? And a friend of his gave some very wise advice. He said, okay, if you want to meet the partner of your dreams, 
list out all of the qualities that you would like to have in that person. I mean down to everything. How they handle difficult situations, their goals about money, starting and raising a family, when, etc. Values, beliefs, all of the things that would comprise the ultimate great relationship. So my friend went away and did his homework assignment and came back to his buddy and said, well, I've got my list. And his friend said, great. Now the next step is become that list. (laughs) Wow. There is vibrational attraction 101, isn't it? Because we attract what we are. We attract what we vibrate. Become that list. Well, What dawned on me is that what we have to do in order to implement this level of Dr. Dyer's connection with Source as our provider of intentions is that, first of all, we have to become aware of everything that Source is. So we have to understand the attributes of Source. And then, I've already given away the next step, we have to become that list. So if we think about What is source? And this is what we did on our Sunday night healing convergence meetings. We're having these on Facebook. It has turned into something really, truly special. If you join the Facebook group, Subconscious Mind Mastery and Fun Astrology podcast listeners, we do it every Sunday night on there as a Facebook Live at 8 p.m. So right now, as I'm recording this, we just introduced this in that group last Sunday night. One of the follow-ups that we're talking about is, what is your definition of source? A couple of the themes that have come up are unconditional love. Yes, absolutely. Another is, source is everything that is. It's nothing, and it's everything. A field of energy that runs through everything like a force. And then somebody said, like Star Wars, you know, the, the force, the force be with you. It's everywhere, and it is that element that is by your side exactly when you need it. I think it's interesting because as we think of source, we are certainly going to run it through the filter of how we were brought up or how we were taught to view source. For me, that came up with a lot of attributes about source, or as I learned, God, obviously, Nothing wrong with that term. It's just sometimes people prefer other things. However, you determine that all supreme entity is. And I do believe, certainly, it is an energy. And it is so far beyond our own comprehension. In fact, things like majestic come to mind. Infinite, all-knowing, ultimate wisdom permeates every space. And yes, we are co-creators with that source. But here are some others that I listed. So love beyond any description, joy, happiness, light, L-I-T-E, easy, peaceful, healing, abundant, overflowing, powerful, constantly grateful, patient, kind, gentle, in control of all situations, carries a good reputation, creative, compassionate, forgiving, accepting, consistent, dependable, a protector. And as you think about those attributes, now you know the assignment, become that list. So the thing that we have to think about now is where are we not compatible or where are we not commensurate with our very view or perception of source itself? Because right there is the breakdown between us achieving our goal of the intention and source assisting us versus, dude, you got to pick that cup up all by yourself. <laughs> you know, you got to pick that mug up. You are on your own. But when we break from source, then we are truly on our own. Have you ever known just a truly powerful manifester? Somebody that, you know, they just flow with ease and they bring good things into their life. I guarantee you that somewhere underneath that manifesting ability is this right here. It is that they are commensurate with their view of source. They have become the list and they maintain the list. 
on a regular daily basis. Then, of course, as we identify that list and then become that list, then our actions become a natural outflow of the attributes of that list. And that's where we naturally will do random acts of kindness. We don't have to schedule them. We just do them. That's who we are. How we respond in difficult situations becomes an outflow of that list. And our governing, overarching emotion, energy, is unconditional love. But the problem is that we humans can be really good sometimes at fooling ourselves or playing a game that really is not authentic. So Dr. Dyer had a great analogy in his audiobook called The Match Game. So you play this little game with yourself to see if you are staying connected or if you are getting disconnected. Here are a couple of lines that I wrote down. These are great. Are you aligning and allowing your senior partner to handle your life with you? Mm, That's a good one, isn't it? Or, I accept the guidance and assistance of the same force that created me. I make no demands on it. This is reconnecting with source. So the match game is really simple. You just determine if where you are, what you're saying, what you're doing aligns with that list of the attributes that you've created about source. So you see why it's so important to make that list in the first place. So if you say, for example, I don't have enough money. I never have enough money. That's a no match statement to your list. A match statement would say, I intend to attract unlimited abundance into my life. A no-match statement might be, my partner is boring and just grumpy and angry all the time. That's a no-match statement. It's a statement based on observation, and it doesn't align with that list. There's no attribute on that list that matches with that kind of a perception. But this does. I intend to focus my thoughts on what I absolutely love and adore about my partner. Here's a no match. I'm not as physically attractive as I would like to be. There's nothing on that list about self-judgment in a negative kind of way. A match would be, I am perfect in God's eyes. I am a divine manifestation of the very process of creation. So you can play the match game through the week, but I think that the best way to do it is to first stop and determine that list of attributes of source. Because if you know then what you're aligning with, then it's very easy through the day to even catch yourself in activities where you say, oop, I'm not in alignment here. You know, great example, getting frustrated in traffic. In the alignment, you would say, I have all kinds of time. I set my own time. I go my own pace. And that somebody else's anger or aggression certainly does not affect me. And I just let it go. And I let them go. Having to control a situation, feeling that you need to be on top, feeling that you need to get the extra edge in a business deal. You practiced the concept two podcasts ago. What if up? What if I do my very best and everything works out exactly as it should because I am a partner with Source? And then you observe. You watch the other's behavior and you realize as you get into the process a little bit further that there are some integrity issues that all of a sudden got flagged and became very obvious and you simply step away. You just saved potential disaster. All you're doing in all of these exercises is keeping that list ever-present with you and in your mind and then simply aligning with it in everything you do. So then, to kind of pull all this together of how you can just be this little package of power all the time, in every situation, you can first of all come at it with your list in mind. And with that, then it's pretty easy to think constantly, what if up? What if the outcome is always positive? Because I'm intending that it will be. And then you play the match game. 
are my actions, my thoughts, my alignments, and my energy parallel to becoming that list that I've made of my definition of the attributes of source? And then, is there a Jenga block in there that could be pulled? In other words, an old habit or an old way of being that could just simply be pulled out of the stack, set off to the side, and retired. That one is complete. And after all of that, then make pitches to the universe. (laughs) See, we're bringing in a lot of these concepts that we've talked about in past podcasts and a lot of the past work and just putting it all into one package. Then you make pitches to the universe. Throw things out there from the new perspective of this alignment with source and then see if the universe moves you in that direction. See if you get a hit in the baseball analogy. You make a pitch, boom, get a hit. Run the base and know that the universe is running with you. Now you are living the power of intention. Oh, I'll tell you, this is such valuable information, and this will help you align and square up your life so much. And if you find that there are a lot of misalignments, don't worry about it. One Jenga block at a time. Pull the ones that are easy, just like you would in the Jenga game, and then keep pulling where you feel tightness or you feel pressure, resistance, Work that one through, and eventually you'll pull it off the, out of the block as well. These are just the areas of your life that are keeping you from being all that you can be. And eventually, you'll wake up one morning, and there won't be any more Jenga blocks to pull. Then, your life will truly become a co-creating adventure every day with Source. Oh, I wish that for you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you'll be in our Facebook group page over there so that we can keep in touch. That's kind of where the conversation is these days. And thank you so much for playing the game with all of us. I'm Thomas Miller. Enjoy the journey.